Hey, welcome back everybody to your uh, next ecology lesson where we will be studying the ecological level of organization known as the population level. Uh, just to refresh your memory, uh, in the last lesson we were talking about the different levels of ecological organization, starting with the organism, working our way up through populations, communities, ecosystems, biomes, and all the way up to the biosphere. So now for the rest of our unit, we're going to be kind of going through that exact same progression and we're going to be starting at the population level next working our way up to communities and then finally ending with a, a study of larger ecosystems so this is your lesson specifically geared toward toward one of the smaller levels um, the level of population so this slide right here represents two out of three factors that we use when we describe uh, important aspects of a population. So two of the three factors are shown in this um, this slide right here. So we'll start right here with these uh, pictures A, B, and C across the top. This is the first uh, kind of descriptor we use when we're talking about populations. And this is known, or these three pictures at least, represent what we call geographic distribution of a population, or population distribution. And Letter A right here shows what we call a clumped distribution. So distribution just means how the individuals in a population are spread out over a given area. Okay, what pattern uh, do they show as they spread out over a given area? So letter A right here is a clumped pattern, wherein if this is our given area, and the dots on here represent individuals, those individuals are kind of all clumped up in various parts of that area, but they definitely look like they're grouped in some sort of way. They're clumped together. So that's one form of population distribution. Uh, option B right here is a form of population distribution known as uniform distribution, where again, inside of our area that we're looking at, all these dots representing individuals, they're all spread apart from each other, but they're spread apart a uniform or an equal distance from each other. So they're all spread out evenly. Uh, C right here is a type of population distribution called random distribution, where again, if you're looking inside of our area and the dots represent the individuals, there's really no rhyme or reason to why those individuals are, are located where they are. It's, it's totally random. So these three examples across the top of your screen are showing population distribution, which simply means how uh, organisms are spread out across a given area that they occupy. Uh, this map right here of the United States represents the second kind of feature we use when we describe a population, and it's known as population density. Density is different than distribution, where distribution just describes how the organisms are spread over the area they uh, inhabit. Density refers to a number of organisms that live in a given area. So this map of the United States uses different colors to show the number of humans that live in certain areas of the USA. So that area is a square mile, and the number is shown by these different colors. So the red regions represent where there are 250 or more people per square mile. And then the, the kind of dark orange, 50 to 250 people per square mile, and on down to uh, this yellow color and the white color here. So distribution is shown here, which just means how the individuals are spread out over the area in which they live. And density, population density, is shown in number two, which means how many individuals live in a certain amount of space. And this slide represents the third factor we use to describe populations. And, and that's really what the rest of this lesson is going to be about. It's population growth rate. So we, we use distribution, we use density, and this slide represents our third factor, and that is population growth. Now within population growth or population growth rate, there are certain things that affect the growth rate of a population. Okay? And this slide does a good job of showing what those, what those various things are. So um, on the one hand over here, we have births and we have deaths. Okay. So if, we're, if this is our population that we're talking about, what affects the size of this population of, of birds in this case? We could have the births of new birds, obviously would increase that population size and add individuals to that population. Whereas, in this <laughs> kind of a morbid example, but we have the birds sitting on the tree branch expecting nothing and then being picked off by this hawk or this eagle. Um, 
Obviously, deaths would then remove individuals from the population. So births help increase the population size, where deaths obviously decrease the population size. But then there's this complete other uh, aspect right here, immigration and emigration. We call this individual movement. Okay, so not only do births and deaths influence the size of a population, but so does the movement of individuals. Immigration is when individuals come into a population, and obviously that helps increase the size. And emigration, with an E, is when individuals leave a population, and obviously that would decrease the population size. So the third factor we use to describe populations is, is population growth, and the factors that influence growth are births, deaths, immigration, and emigration. Okay, so while we're talking about population growth, we're focusing in on that third factor of populations um, that we use to describe populations. This is the first type of growth pattern that you need to be familiar with, and it is known as logistics. Excuse me, that's not right at all. It's known as exponential growth. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, so here we are dealing with exponential growth, and this is a very characteristic graph uh, that you need to familiar, familiarize yourself with as we move forward in this particular lesson. So an exponential growth, uh, population growing exponentially, or an exponential growth curve, which is a, a graph that shows that exponential growth, has a very, very specific shape. And it has to do with what exponential growth actually means. So exponential growth occurs in a population when a population is allowed to grow without any limitation. Okay, So we see the number of organisms, which are shown right here on that y-axis, over time, as time increases on the x-axis, the number of organisms gets greater and greater and greater and seems like it's never going to stop. That's because exponential growth occurs, number one, when reproduction rate is constant. So when individuals in a population are reproducing consistently, then obviously the birth rate goes up and therefore the size of the population goes up as well. So that leads to this kind of increase, that constant birth rate. However, just the constant birth rate doesn't give us exponential growth by itself. Exponential growth also occurs when, when uh, a population lives in, a, in ideal conditions. Okay? And usually to describe ideal conditions, we say unlimited resources. So the conditions for for the population are, are perfect, are ideal for them to grow, and usually that's because there is a, an abundance of resources, whether it's food or water or space, whatever those resources may be, there is an abundance of resources. Nothing is limiting that population from growing, so as time goes on, we see that characteristic continuous increase in population growth. Okay. Now, typically, we call this a J curve, and you can kind of see why. It looks like the shape of a J. So exponential growth you'll typically hear called a J curve or shown by a J curve. Again, we just have that consistently increasing and increasing faster and faster and faster over time. Population doing that because birth rate is consistent and the, the conditions are perfect. There's unlimited amount of resources that allow all the new births to, to, uh, to stay within the population and the population can grow over time. And then here is kind of the counterpart to exponential growth. Um, and this is known as logistics growth or a logistics growth curve. Okay, so let's just talk about what a logistics growth curve means at first. Logistics growth um, is when we have, notice this right here, exponential growth early on in the growth of a population. So we have that kind of characteristic J curve and we have that steady increase, increase, increase in population size. However, the reason this is logistics growth is that population does not increase forever. In fact, it gets to a point where essentially, even though this shows kind of some waviness, that population flatlines over time. And the size of that population does not continue to grow, but actually becomes stagnant and reaches a point when it cannot grow any further. And like I said, kind of starts to flatline. Um, so even though there is a period of exponential growth, logistics growth occurs when that exponential growth slows down or stops altogether and that population starts to level out. 
This is a little bit more realistic of populations that we tend to study in biology uh, because it's unrealistic to think that a population can grow forever. So this flatlining that we get of, of uh, a population in logistics growth model occurs because resources are not unlimited. Right? There's, a, there's a finite amount of food, and there's a finite amount of water, and there's a finite amount of space. So resources of whatever this population uh, is uh, are limited. There's a limited amount of resources, and the birth rate can't stay consistent over time. Okay, So those factors all cause this very characteristic leveling of logistics growth. Now, before we get into some other parts of this graph here, um, just like... Uh, uh, um, exponential growth is considered a J curve. Sometimes we call logistics growth an S curve. It doesn't quite look like an S, but with a little imagination, you can kind of see something of an S taking form as this logistics growth model plays out over the, the course of the curve here. So there's a few things that you need to know about logistics curve, that it's basically exponential growth, but it does flatline at a certain point. Now, that certain point is known by its own vocabulary term, carrying capacity. Okay, The carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals that an environment can support. So if we trace this kind of flat line back over here to the y-axis, we have this point right here on the y-axis. And if this were a curve with, with actual numbers going up the y-axis, we would read those numbers. And this number right here would represent the carrying capacity of this particular population, the maximum number of individuals that the environment of this population can support. In these last two slides, we're going to talk about something called a limiting factor. And a limiting factor is defined as a condition that limits the, um, uh, the ability of a population to grow. So just like it sounds, a limiting factor will actually keep a population from growing forever. So it will keep a population from growing exponentially, and it will actually make a population grow more logistically, where there's a carrying capacity, a maximum number that that population cannot exceed. And a limiting factor is basically what sets that, that carrying capacity, that maximum number. This first slide here represents the first of two categories of limiting factors, and you see the name of it down here. This is a density-dependent limiting factor. A density-dependent limiting factor is a limiting factor that depends upon the size of the population. So a great example of density-dependent limiting factor is predation. Okay? The size of a population of predators is very much influenced by the density of the prey that they eat. So when the density of the prey population goes up, then the density of the predator population can go up as well. But when the density of the prey population goes down, then the density of the predator population goes down too. So this is an example of a density dependent limiting factor, the amount of prey that is available for the predator to eat. Okay. There's a few other examples of density dependent limiting factors like competition. Okay. Think about if, if two uh, organisms are competing for something, the more organisms there are competing, the harder it is for those organisms to actually uh, uh, grow within their population. So competition is a density dependent limiting factor. So is disease as, as the populations as a population gets more and more dense and more and more individuals crammed in that space, then disease becomes a bigger, bigger threat to that population growing forever and ever and ever. And here's the second category of uh, limiting factors, but this is called a density independent limiting factor, a limiting factor that does not depend upon the size of a population. And examples include uh, weather, natural disasters, a change in seasons, or even human influence. So here's an example of a population that was growing exponentially, and then it reached this point right here, and maybe some sort of natural disaster, or a, a wildfire, or a human came along and took that species, or that, sorry, that population completely down, that would be a density independent limiting